What is going on, guys? What is going on? Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can hear me. All right, so uh, if you guys saw the announcements on my Twitter, on the YouTube stories, on Instagram, etc., I didn't even know that you can actually do fundraisers for your YouTube for for the YouTube videos, right? For the for the the live sessions. So I was just messing around with the settings, and I saw that I'm like, of course that makes sense because people send me super chats all the time, right? Like they want to get their, their questions answered and I want to answer your questions and I do appreciate the super chats, but I always say you guys don't have to do that. However, because there are a ton of people that join the live streams, you feel like you, your questions get drowned out. And so you feel like you have to send the super chats in order to get my attention. But in this case, you can send all the super chats you like because it's all going to the St. Jude Children's Hospital. You can pick the charity of, of your choice on the on YouTube and it's all vetted by this organization called Network for Good. So send in your super chats. I'm not going to discourage you from doing so anymore. I used to discourage you from doing so because I I felt bad. Like I didn't I didn't need the super chats. However, now it is for a good cause. So send all the super chats you can and I will get to your questions. I promise you. You can ask me anything trading related or not. This is what these live streams are about. But good to see you guys this morning. We will get into a lot. We'll get into some of the market catalysts that we're looking at. Uh, let me just make an announcement actually on the on the Discord because a lot of you get caught up in trading and you forget that I'm actually going live. I'm live now. Click here. <laughs> All right. Let me just send this out and then we will get right into it, guys. We will get right into it. But thank you guys for those that have already donated. Obviously, there's no obligation. Nothing changes on your end. It's just if you were to send, if you were going to send a super chat anyway, um, now it just goes to the right place instead of to me. So, all right, let's get right into it. So, as you guys know, if you've been following the the YouTube, the, the YouTube videos, there's a couple of things that, that we're looking at, right? So we're looking at obviously what the Fed is going to do tomorrow. So there is a symposium at Jackson, uh, Jackson Hall, Jackson Hole, but I think it's going to be virtual this time around. However, that doesn't matter. In the symposium, what they're going to be discussing is tapering, right? And I've, I did a bunch of videos now on the history of how tapers actually affect the market. And it's not as detrimental as some other YouTube videos that, that, that you've seen out there, some other articles that you've seen out there, that we actually do have data on this. Quantitative easing, real quantitative easing by the Fed actually started in 2008 as a response to the financial crisis. So there's been this sort of boom bust cycle of injecting money into, into the markets, injecting money into the treasury uh, treasury bonds, as well as mortgage backed securities, and, and then tapering those asset purchases when the Fed feels like the market can support on its own. So we do have, we do have this, this sort of back and forth cycle. Oh, anonymous donated to the St. Jude Children's Hospital. Thank you so much. And you know, that's, that's very, whoever did that, that's very noble of you, uh, to remain anonymous, but that's, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, what I was saying is is this this boom bust cycle of of you know asset purchases and then tapering those asset purchases. So if you guys want me to go over again why the Fed does this, what it means, how they suppress interest rates, etc., I will. So just let me know in, in the chat. If not, if you guys already have seen the videos of me talking about this, then then that's fine. We don't need to get into it either. But I know some of you get confused between treasury yields versus the actual price of the treasuries versus why the Fed is doing this and and what it means to, to actually taper, right? So that's what we're, we're going to be watching out for. That and then obviously the infrastructure bill. Now, I do think that the market will continue to melt up. We will continue to see uh, basically the, the, in, the indices as well as, as the mega cap growth stocks and value stocks. We will continue to see them climb up if the infrastructure bill passes as well as the the um 
if, if the Fed actually says that they're not going to taper or they're going to postpone tapering talks. Because right now, what everyone's expecting is that they're going to revisit this at some point at the end of the year. And in my view, I think that that messaging will remain unchanged. Let me get to some of your questions. Chris Wolf, thank you so much for your donation. Don't post at the opening of the market. Don't post at the opening of the market. Uh, Hannah, what do you mean? Don't post at the opening of the market. Uh, it, it's I, I actually deliberately wait until half an hour, uh, half an hour until the, the, the market is open. That way we get to manage our trades and, and, and whatnot. David Martinez left. Meet Kevin live stream just to make sure I got to you on time. Thank you. Meet Kevin just ended his anyway. Okay, cool. Uh, anyone from the UK? Yes, there are a ton of people on the Discord from the UK, by the way. Uh, did I get to N MU? Ah, I just missed it. Someone was saying MU looks like a great buy. Yes, if you remember the last live stream that I did on Monday, we actually bought a leap on MU. That leap is currently up 13%. Hi, newly joined. Worth buying Micron at current price. I mean, look, anytime somebody misses an opportunity, they're always going to say, is it too late to buy? Is it too late to buy? Obviously, the higher the price goes, the riskier it gets in the short term, right? But if you're looking at this company long term and you look at its fundamentals, no, it's not too late to buy. But what people usually mean is I want to buy now because I want to FOMO. And if it drops by a penny after I buy it, I'm going to cry, right? That's not how investing works. If you're trading, then then you will already have a stop limit set. You you'll have your profit target set. If you're investing, you don't worry about that, right? You look at the at the the fundamentals of the company. You might even look at the technicals and say, hey, based on some of these factors, the way that I evaluate companies, this company is undervalued at its current price, and so I'm going to buy and hold here, right? That's that's how investing works. So is it too late? That question doesn't really make sense unless you are of that mindset that if I buy here and it drops by a dollar, I'm going to start crying. So if that's the case, then maybe you should rethink your strategy, right? Are you trading? Are you investing? They're two different sports. It's like playing street ball versus organized basketball, right? They're two very different sports. Uh, same thing as, as trading and investing. Let me get to some of your questions. AC says, good afternoon. Hey, from Spain. Hey, good afternoon. When do you trim your long-term holdings and how much? So, I don't trim my long-term holdings unless there is a fundamental shift in the industry or the company that I'm holding, okay? So I'm old. So fun fact, there was a time actually when energy companies, specifically fossil fuel companies, right? Chevron, Exxon, the big names. There was a time when those companies as well as tobacco companies were companies that you wanted to hold for the long term. Obviously, the landscape has shifted in both of those industries, okay? And by the way, thank you to everyone who's who's been uh, donating. That's awesome. But the the landscape has shifted in both of those industries. Okay. So if you're looking at your portfolio and you're underweight on say tech stocks, but you're overweight on tobacco and fossil fuels, well, then you might make a fundamental change in your portfolio. But in general, right, those paradigm shifts aside, I normally don't trim long term holdings. For a few reasons. One, if they're high conviction, there is no such thing as being too high, okay? So I know people look at Amazon, for instance, right now, and it has a high share price. It's trading at over $3,000, okay? But think about this. If Apple never split, because Apple went through, how many splits is it now? I lost track, but I think over time, I think it's seven or eight, could be more, could be less, give or take a few. However, Point is, if Apple never split, Apple's share price would be $23,000 today. $23,000, okay? So there isn't such a thing as being too expensive just because the share price is in the thousands. Amazon can easily split in, in the coming you know weeks or months. It could split again over time because Apple's been around since, since the 80s, so it had a chance to split forever. But Amazon can easily split and, you know, you'll get newbies that come and say, oh, Apple's share price is only $149. It's cheap. Well, how many shares are there? That's what matters. And then you look at the market cap of the company and it's the most valuable company in the world, even though its share price is only $149. It's because the number of shares are so large due to the splits, right, to try to keep the stock price down. 
um, they look at Amazon at 3000 and, and they automatically think that Amazon has a bigger market cap than Apple. It doesn't. So, um, you know, with that said, I, I hold, if, if I'm, if I have a high conviction on something, I will hold it. That is the first reason. Second reason is tax purposes. You essentially get taxed double for selling your positions in less than a year, right? You're taxed at your income tax rate, the same as, as you make from your nine to five. That's the rate at which you get taxed if you make any gains and you take out those gains before a year. If you hold on for longer than a year, then you're taxed at the long-term capital gains tax rate, which is usually half or could even be more than half off of what your typical income tax rate is. So um, there are ways to, to mitigate any drops in, in your long-term holdings. So you can sell calls against your shares. You could buy protective puts. You can buy calls on the VIX. You could buy, um, you can buy inverse ETFs, et cetera. There, there's, there, there are a few ways to go about this um, as opposed to just selling your shares and inheriting that additional tax burden. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Uh, did I miss any super chats? Let me see. I don't know if I did. How do you, how do you get to see that? I don't think, guys, if I miss any super chats, let me know. I mean, I'm assuming if these are just straight up donations, that's awesome. But also know that the super chat also goes to the same uh, thing. So if you want me to answer a question, send the super chat. Randy, I love you. I love you too. Love your lives. Z. Thank you uh, for keeping this up. That's Eloy. What's up, Eloy? How you doing, man? Long time. I haven't talked to you in a while. Regine, what's going on, Regine? How are you doing? Uh, living her best life. Regine's Instagram stories are always lit. DraftKings. All right. What do you want me to do on DraftKings? Live day trade of AMC. Um, let me look at, at where AMC is at. I don't know if I will live day trade it. And what I've been doing on AMC, I've actually just been selling puts on AMC. That's it. Right? So like when AMC is at the hundred day moving average, you can sell the $30 put for a ton of money because implied volatility is so high. And it hasn't been below thirty dollars since all the way back in in June, or hasn't sorry been below the uh, the hundred day moving average. Actually, more than June. It actually hasn't been below the hundred day moving average since Jesus. I didn't even realize it's been that long since January. It hasn't been below the hundred day moving average. So, yeah, you could just sell puts on that. Um, I'm not gonna live day trade it. No, um, I do want to answer people's questions and stuff. Day trading. I, I, if you guys really want to see me day trade and, and you want to see me sit there for, for hours just to pick a couple of positions, I'll do that if it tickles your fancy and we get enough people joining. Um, but no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that here in, in the next few minutes. Day trading takes a lot longer than people think, right? Day trading, it's something where you're really spending hours just to make a couple of trades. You're like a hunter. Um, you're not just click clacking away all day. You really aren't. You know, when I, when I used to day trade more, I would make a handful of trades a day. It's not like, you know, maybe Forex is a little different, but it's not like you're just click clacking away like a video game, making a hundred trades a day. No, you over trade. That's how you, that's how you, uh, you lose your, your shorts really. So, all right. Can you go over M U? I did. I don't know if you saw it. Um, thoughts on SoFi. Ravi donated. Oh, dude, Ravi. Good man. Good man. That's that's amazing of you. Um, thoughts on SoFi. All right. I usually don't like the thoughts questions because they're too vague and, and lazy. But I went over SoFi before. I think SoFi is an OK buy here at the at major support. The only thing is, I think that their earnings, their last earnings that they reported actually disappointed. Um, so yeah, I don't think anybody expected them to be profitable, but I do think that they expected them to have a little bit of a loss and they came in well above that, right? So the estimate was minus six EPS or earnings per share, minus six cents earnings per share. And they came in at minus 48 cents earnings per share. So, you know, what is that? Eight times as much, uh, of a loss as, as the market expected. So, you know, I, I like them. They, they have a growing user base, um, their growth is, is pretty impressive from, from a user standpoint, but it might be a while before you see a pop, obviously, unless there's some sort of short squeeze or some sort of anomalous event. But fundamentally, I, I do think that it'll be a while before SoFi is worth something. Now you, you might have to want to, you might have to wait until their next earnings. I, I actually don't mind getting in here, but 
nobody knows the, the true value of, of SoFi yet. So SoFi can easily be a stock where, you know, you buy in at $14 and in a few weeks it's nine bucks and, you know, you're down a hell of a lot of, of, of at least percentage wise, you're down a hell of a lot. Right. So um, you could dollar cost average into it, but on something like SoFi, I, I would honestly just just wait, sell cash secure puts. Maybe that's that's what I did on SoFi or just wait to see what the next round of earnings yields until you're more certain about the company's fundamentals. Right. So that's that. that those are my thoughts on, on SoFi. Um, Hazy, good afternoon from the UK. Just want to give you props. You give intellectual content that we can make educated decisions with. Edward, thank you so much for the feedback, man. I, lo I love I love the, the feedback that you guys send, whether positive or negative. It allows me to shape the content of this channel. Um, best MU answer, crying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, thoughts on Sesson. Randy says thought. <laughs> this is a politically incorrect spelling of the word thoughts for those of you that are in the know. Um, all right. I'm holding several PFE $50 option calls expiration September 17th. And I'm super red. Uh, I mean, what is, what is your goal here? Like, when did you buy them? Because PFE actually had a run up recently due to the fact that the vaccine was announced for FDA approval. So what was this on Monday? Yeah. On Monday, PFE almost made uh, a recent high. Is that the all time high? I'm not sure. Let me see. Yes. It made an all time high or close to an all time high. Um, not sure when you bought the calls, but if you bought them before this, why didn't you sell them? Like, what is your goal, right? A lot of times newbies will get into positions and they'll say, what should I do here? Well, what was your goal before you click the buy button? Because if you didn't know, you probably shouldn't click the buy button, right? It doesn't mean that you can't change your mind midstream. It just means have an idea of what the hell you're doing, right? It, like trading is the only endeavor where people click the buy button and they don't know why. Well, I guess, you know what? I take that back. I've made stupid purchases before where like I bought something and I'm like, why do I have this? And you probably felt some sort of impulse the day that you bought it. However, you're trying to make money when you're trading, right? So if you click buy, what is, what is the goal there? Um, if PFE almost made an all time high on Monday and you were in it, why didn't you sell? Like, what were you waiting for? right? People hate the idea of selling. I don't understand. Like I'll, I, I'll never understand this, right? Like I, I come from an older generation of, of traders where selling was the motive. Profit is the motive. What song is that? I think that's a Drake song, but profit was the motive, right? <laughs> it, it's so funny that, that like there's a new generation of traders that are so hesitant to sell either for a loss to rotate into something more quality, right? Or, or, or sell to take profits. I, I just will never get, I will never get that mentality. Um, but it does exist because I see it is endemic specifically to new traders. So um, with those $50 calls, remember you're up against time decay. People don't, newbies don't, don't understand this about call options. I did a whole video on why I don't buy calls. So search for the traveling trader call options on YouTube and you'll see it. Um, but there's a reason I don't buy calls unless I feel like gambling. But there's a reason that I don't buy calls as a, a, a profit making strategy, right? It's, it's not like in options, you have far superior strategies that are better suited for regular income, such as uh, vertical spreads and diagonal spreads. But there's a reason that I don't, I don't buy calls. And one of them is time decay. So not only do you need PFE to blow past $50 in a very short amount of time now, but you need it to do that. You need, you need it to do that, uh, you know, relatively soon or else your, your calls are going to get killed by time decay and they're going to get killed by negative Delta because PFE is actually dropping in price and not rising in price. Okay. Um, that is why being a seller of options is far superior because you offload that responsibility to the buyer of the option, right? Most advanced options traders either trade spreads and or only sell options. They don't buy options, right? It's, it's a, it's, it's a crapshoot every single time. So what was your goal with those, with those PFE calls? Um, you know, and it's, 
I, it's up to you if, if you think PFE can make a comeback in a relatively short amount of time. It is sitting at the 21 EMA. You could see a bounce here. But remember, you're not holding rent free. You're being t that ass is being taxed every single day that you hold those calls. Right. So look at what the theta is on on your calls and you'll know how much you're losing every day just by holding it. OK, uh, he went over Sess in the last live stream. Yes, I did. Uh, I missed a lot. I missed a lot. I missed a lot. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I missed any super chats or are these. These are just straight up donations. That is awesome, guys. You guys are freaking amazing because you know that you can easily donate just by super chatting and you will also get the added benefit of, uh, of having me answer your question because it will get raised to the top. But you guys are just donating and a lot of you are donating anonymously, which is amazing. So thank you. Uh, Mike says it tickles my fancy. Oh, did I say that? I say that a lot. I probably said tickles my fancy at some point. CHPT, it's dying. Um, well, I guess it depends on, on when you got in. CHPT is not dying. I mean, like, what are these adjectives that you guys use in, in the market? Like, it's in, the, it's been in this, I drew this channel months ago and it's still in this channel, right? This it's it's trading with this is what you call trading within range dying all right here here's what dying would look like dying would look like this okay that's dying this right here it's trading within range and it's waiting for a catalyst so unless you bought at you know 40 bucks yeah i could see why you would use the the crying emoji but you you know if if you bought at support when you know when when we got in um then you shouldn't be uh you shouldn't be that crying emoji i think is a little bit a little bit exaggerated maybe all right and in dm i'm stuck with 80 percent down okay you shouldn't be stuck with 80 percent down on anything um that's just crazy i did i i showed i have this uh <sighs> let me see i have this thing where is it all right so check this out this right here is if if you're if you're able to screenshot this off of this live stream, do it, okay? This shows you how much a stock needs to rally just to get back to break even, okay? If you're down 80%, look how much a stock needs to rally just for you to get back to break even. I know this seems like black magic it's not this is simple math okay people people don't understand percentages they they, they think that oh something's 80 percent down well if it rallies 80 percent, then i'll be back at break even no no this needs to rally by 400 percent just for you to make zero dollars this is why i always talk about rotating right a lot of these hyper growth stocks these meme stocks these these zombie stocks that people are overweight on they will never see the light of day again OK, some of them will. Some of them won't. I'm not saying NNDM won't. It might never. OK, it did way too many offerings with too few catalysts in a short amount of time. But if you're down 80 percent and you're overweight, you need the stock to rally by 400 percent. OK, there's nothing wrong with taking that money and saying, oh, you know what? Amazon is at the 300 day moving average or 200. I can't remember 200 day moving average or something. Right. Micron is is at support. These are blue chip stocks, okay? People get so stuck on this concept of not rotating or not selling because, you know, some folks started a YouTube channel last year and they repeated the mantra, you only lose if you sell, okay? That's, that's not true. That's not true. If you have a broken down car, right? And it's sitting in the garage and you have a chance to sell it for parts and buy a working car, what would you do? Would you just stare at your car and be like, oh, I only lose if I sell? <laughs> no, motherfucker, you're already losing. The car doesn't work, right? So, excuse my language. So, <laughs> you know, same thing Same thing applies here. Like, there's nothing wrong with rotating into uh, something that's higher quality. You're not losing. You're simply transferring your funds. But back to uh, this person and, and the NNDM question. Yeah, you need it to rally by 400%. Um, so hopefully you're not overweight on it. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm certainly not taking any joy in your, in your pity, but, um, I mean, it's, it's math at the end of the day, guys, it's math. 
So, um, oh, da, 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 da. doesn't SoFi have 40% of their float short? I don't think it's that high. I could certainly check for you. If we go to Ortex, let's check. All right, let's see. What did you just ask me about? God damn, I need more coffee. Uh, SoFi, okay. <laughs> let's see if it's 40% or not. Lucky for you, we have the data. Um, estimated exchange reported short interest, estimated short interest uh, percent. Let's see. No, it looks like it's hovering around 10%, my man, or my lady. Uh, I don't remember who asked that question, but it looks like it's hovering around 10%. No, it's not 40%. Days to cover is 1.2. It's not so heavily shorted, okay? Um, but uh, yeah, that's the short interest on, on SoFi. All right, let's see. Is CHPT still a buy? I mean, it's sitting at support. If you... Yes, if you're trying to play the infrastructure uh, aspect, sure. But I wouldn't go overweight on something like CHPT. You know, look at my portfolio. It, it, I mean, you saw it in, in the last video. For those of you that are not on, on the Discord, it, like those types of plays are, are like decimal percentage points of my portfolio. They're not, they're not 10, 20, 30% of my portfolio. You should only dedicate that stuff to, to blue chips, to, to blue chip indexes, etc. Um, if you explain on EXPI, what do you mean? Sorry, not, I don't know. I'm holding NNDM option ending December down 80%. Same thing that, I mean, same thing applies what, what I've been saying the whole time. Um, thoughts on thoughts. Okay, made money on blah, blah, blah. All right. Um... Oh, you know what I do want to check is toll because we have a position on toll that is up. We sent out a uh, an earnings trade on toll. By the way, if you want access to all the trades, link is in the description. But I do want to check what toll is doing. However, trading view is being slow. Uh, toll. Whoops. Toll. All right. Uh, close. All right, cool. So our option will get max value if toll stays at $62. $62. And after earnings, it's still at $62. So they slightly beat earnings. I don't think it was uh, that huge of a, of a revelation, which is why the, the price is staying static, which is exactly what we want. So um, good job to those of you that are in that trade. It looks like, I mean, it's already profit, profitable, but if it stays like this until Friday, we will likely 3x to 4x our money. But obviously, the longer you keep it open, the more you risk. So nothing is for free in the market. Just know that. All right. Uh, thank you, Z, to reiterate profit taking is the number one goal. Yes, it definitely is. I mean, what else are we doing this for? Wow. Another $100 anonymous donation to the St. Jude Children's. Guys, you guys are overwhelming me. Like, I honestly thought it would just be like a few super chats here and there. Boris, thank you so much for your donation. That is awesome as well. Um, you know, I will be doing this for, for every live stream going forward. So again, any income I generate, any super chats you, you send me go straight to, to St. Jude's. So, all right. Um, thoughts on jazz. I know you talked about it when it was around 150. Yes, guys, look, <clears throat> this is another thing that, that kind of annoys me about folks that try to trade off of YouTube. Okay. Now jazz fundamentally based on what I've talked about in that video looks like, and, and based on their, uh, their, their latest round of earnings, right? They killed earnings. Looks like a good company to hold long-term, right? So if you are a long-term investor and you have conviction in jazz based on some of the things I talked about and you did your own research, then by all means, yes, you can invest in it for the long-term. However, if what annoys me about trading off of YouTube or this this trend of people just making trades off of YouTube is they don't 
they, they, they see a ticker symbol, they buy it. And again, similar to what I was saying before, they just sit around and they wait, looking around like they're lost in a forest, not knowing why they bought it, what to do, et cetera. If you don't know why you're buying something and somebody, it's just because somebody mentioned it, don't buy it, including if I mentioned it, right? Like know why you're doing it. Maybe you share the same conviction. If that's the case, by all means. However, when you're trading and you buy, right? You have a stop limit, you have a profit target, et cetera. Again, very different from investing. If you look at jazz and you're like, I think jazz is undervalued here at 134. I think the true value of jazz is 200, which I think the profit, the, um, the price target on the upgrades it got was I think 220, by the way, that's neither here nor there. If you think that jazz is undervalued, then you might make an investment on jazz and you make an investment using an amount of your portfolio that you think is in line with your conviction, right? That's all it is. If you, if you're in Vegas and you have $500 in your pocket and you know that you need 300, 300 of those dollars for food for the rest of the weekend, and you can only gamble with 200 bucks. Well, that's your risk tolerance, right? Is the 200 bucks. You're not going to put the $500 down and say, Oh shit. You know, I didn't know my own risk tolerance. I really needed 300 for food and 200 for gambling, but I just put $500 down. Same thing with, with, with this. Okay. Now I don't mean to make so many gambling analogies because, but there is a, um, there are similarities between, you know, gambling and, and trading for sure. Um, not so much in, in the act, but in bankroll management. Okay. So if that's the case, on something like jazz, if your conviction is slight, then you might put a little bit. If your conviction is heavy and you're like, fuck, this is the greatest company I've ever heard of, then yes, your conviction might be might be greater. A lot of people did that on, on Tesla, right? They went all in on Tesla. Like literally, they don't own any other stock besides Tesla. Some people did that on Neo, etc. cetera. Um, but if you're just looking to make a trade and you're like, oh, I bought this and now it's down and I don't know what to do with it. Well, what was your exit price, right? What was your profit target? Um, you have to know these things before before you click buy. You have to. In terms of, of me for jazz, I had a stop limit, right? I might have talked about it in that video. I certainly talked about it in the Discord. But there's a limit at which I'm willing to lose. And when something breaks support, I'm like, eh, I'm out. If I'm not investing in it. We're talking specifically about trading, okay? So take that for what it is. Hopefully that helps you. Um, all right. Thoughts on thoughts. <laughs> that is a cool background animation, Lewis says. Yes, I got this from, I don't even remember where. I got it somewhere online. But, you know, I, I think it gets mixed reviews. I think it's cool. But every once in a blue moon, I get comments on, on YouTube saying, oh, man, that's distracting. Like, I really want to listen to what you're saying. But there's this there, there are these two animals that are duking it out behind you. And I'm like, really? That Like, that's what caught your attention? That's what threw you off? Crazy. But, yeah. All right. Uh, you mentioned OCG and before. Is it still a good play? Guys, just because it was mentioned before, maybe it was a good play before. Doesn't mean it's a good play now. Let's look. Um, sure. I mean, it's just sitting dormant at support. Sure. I mean, if you want to take a shot at it. it but, you know, me saying that means that there's at least 100 people that are going to go all in on this. No, no. Guys, I would never preach anything like that. Come on. Wicked Smoke Shop, good job, man, or women, good job. $5 to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, amazing. Emilio, thank you so much for your donation as well. Thank you. Um, all right, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, Fiverr spread is printing, yeah. <laughs> so we have a position on Fiverr, and... A lot of, I don't know about a lot, but a few people abandoned it because, you know, Fiverr wasn't going, it expires like in, I think, September. But a few people abandoned it because, you know, the, the price wasn't moving. However, Fiverr is at support. Um, and I said, especially if the Delta variant is heating up, there are these stay-at-home trades that might do well uh, while the Delta variant talks are still ongoing, Right. Um, and Fiverr is seen kind of as a stay at home trade, kind of, right? Because it's, uh, you're sort of contracting people remotely to do work. Um, but the, 
mo the more important point is that I never sell at support, okay? And so Fiverr is just sitting here at support. You can see this line that I drew here. This is major support going all the way back to November. So uh, I'm still in the position, and it looks like it's doing well according to this user that, that commented on it. So, yeah, thank you for that uh, that info while I'm doing these lives. I'll definitely get to to Fiverr after after the, the live stream. Uh, this is awesome. Good work. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Handy Hands. Thank you. Um, again, I mean, it was just a few clicks of the button. You guys are, are really, really doing the work by uh, by sending in your donations, which I didn't even expect, like, honestly. Um, but that's that's really awesome, man. You guys really proud that, that you guys are, are, are subscribers. Um, someone is spamming. Okay, screw this guy. Walmart spread is down 30%. At what point would you sell? Uh, are you talking about Goku spread on Walmart? Anonymous donated $7 to St. Jude. Thank you, Anonymous. Um, I think that if you're talking about the Goku's Walmart spread, that thing expires in October, man. Like, I, that's another thing about, and again, like, I, I don't mean to, I'm not deriding being a newbie. Everyone was a newbie, including me at one point, right? It's just... I don't think people understand how options work. They don't paper trade enough before jumping into the game. Um, when you have a spread, especially a long dated one, your goal is not to always be in profit from now until the spread expires, right? Like obviously it would be nice if every spread was in profit between now and the time that it expires. But your goal is that the price is above if it's, if it's a bullish spread it's above your strikes or below your strikes if it's a bearish spread by expiration regardless of what happens now if if it fits that criteria by expiration you're going to get max profit okay so again yes nobody likes to see that minus symbol on on their position but also be realistic spreads are not going to be green for you throughout the the length of the time that you're holding it spreads jump up and down a lot especially if they have a wide bid ask spread especially if they're really volatile uh walmart is not volatile but i'm just saying um you've probably been a part of of some spreads which is like oh shit i'm up 200 percent one minute and i'm down 18 percent the next yeah i mean that's just the 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 nature of options it's a low liquidity derivative there actually aren't that many options traded in general so the goal is not for Walmart to be green in perpetuity. The goal is for Walmart to finish based on your the criteria of your spread. And this one expires, I believe, if you're talking about the same one uh, that one of our mods uh, sent out, Goku. Um, if you're talking about that same one, it expires in two months, man. Like, you know, if you don't think that Walmart is going to be bullish by then, then yeah, by all means, you want to offload this while you still have 70% of the value of the spread left, okay? But if you believe that, that Walmart is going to meet that criteria and cr and finish above those uh, strike prices, then, then yeah, you hold it. Um, right now, it's sitting at, at the 21 EMA. I personally, if I had this position, I would not close it out. Just like Fiverr, I never sell at support. Walmart is at support. So I hold it until it breaks support or shows me otherwise, right? All right. Uh, Anonymous donated $7 to St. Jude. Thank you so much. Again, whoever that was, amazing. Walter, our jazz stop limit is 144. Yeah, exactly. It was 144. Um, definitely, I don't bag hold stuff like that. Again, very different than investing. We're just talking about trading. Dead inside and out, always. It says, did you hoop at all while in NYC? Brooklyn Bridge Park is a dope place to say. Yeah, I did hoop actually, not in Brooklyn. I hooped in Manhattan. Uh, there's this little park in in Soho that I was actually surprised was uh, was open due to due to COVID. But yeah, for sure. Um, I love hooping in in New York. It's it's great. It's just like hooping out here in uh, in Venice Beach, right? There's there's sort of this allure to it that that it's like this rough place to hoop, and certainly there could be rough areas to hoop in. But you know, most people are chill as fuck, and it's it's actually fun. Um, but yeah, all right. Uh, da, 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 da. the cues just went red. Yeah. Um, I mean, it made an all time high yesterday. Like, uh, this is not news guys. Like there are red and green candles, right? Uh, the NASDAQ made an all time high yesterday. I mean, it just went red. It's down 0.11%. 
like that's that's not really red this is what you call flat um but yeah i mean it, obviously the closer that we get to the symposium the more flat the ind indices are going to look right and i'm actually thinking about buying calls on the vix or selling puts on the vix let's see what the vix is doing now the vix is the volatility index okay it's actually down today so selling puts on the vix right now would actually be amazing because remember selling a put is uh, a bullish position so if you're expecting the vix to to go up especially as we get closer to the symposium um or on the day of the the fed symposium then you could sell puts you can even buy calls on the vix i personally again like selling options in general I'm, I'm not a huge fan of just buying options but to each their own um we do see this okay so i i actually do think that the the, the news from the fed will be r largely unchanged right and but during the time that the 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 the, uh, the chairman is speaking or some of the representatives of the fed are speaking you do see volatility spikes because people do make panic buys and sells based on the information that they're hearing in real time. So I do like to buy calls on the VIX or sell puts on the VIX right around the time of those binary Fed events. And these are very short-term positions, okay? Look at look at the VIX. I mean, look at it. it. It looks like a volatility index. It looks like a heart rate monitor, okay? So it has sharp spikes and sharp declines. So it, on the VIX, if I see a green candle, Right. Like if I sold puts on the VIX and I see it green tomorrow, I'm selling. I'm closing it. Right. I'm not holding that. You don't hold the VIX. Um, look at it. I mean, you'll kill yourself trying to hold something like this. You you literally give yourself a heart attack. So, yeah. Wow. Five hundred and thirty. Right. Guys, I'm going to be live streaming a lot more often if you guys keep showing this much love. That is amazing. You guys are amazing. Regine says, oh, my day job keeps interrupting me. Um, <laughs> I know how that is. I know that how that is, Regine. I was once there for sure. Um, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, Dan Williams donated 50 bucks. Thank you so much, Dan Williams. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm really humbled. Um, how to trade options. That's like asking how to fly a plane. Um, it's not, you know, it's not that, it's not that I can't answer you in... Okay, you know what? There are, even though I do have a course on trading options, you certainly can learn how to trade options for free. Just YouTube it and, and see what you come up with. See if it interests you. Google it. See if it interests you. Um, you know, before you spend any money on, on any resources. Do you have a training video on spreads? Um, aside from the options course, I'm trying to think because I have hundreds of videos on YouTube. <sighs> No, I think I have one on covered calls, one on cash secure puts. Obviously, I have one explaining call options and why I don't buy them. I don't think I have one specifically on spreads. I might do one if 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 it's beneficial to you guys, for sure. Uh, Casey Ray donated $5. Thank you so much, Casey. Thank you. That's amazing. Th I mean, this is amazing. Uh, Jazz Pharma. I, I talked about Jazz quite a bit. Rewind the video um blah 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 can you take a look at blackberry stuart reed says okay i'll take a look at blackberry um oh i also want to take a look at express lewis of the lion says mecca of basketball oh you're talking about new york yeah it, it is it is Derek Farr. thank you so much 20 dollar donation um i really love regine says i really love what you're doing with saint jude's contributions my props to you thank you regine thank you um again i mean it's just a, a couple clicks of the mouse you guys are, are doing all the work i didn't i honestly did not expect there to be not one super chat um you know i thought i thought most of the donations would come in the form of super chats because you guys actually get something out of that right you get your question bumped up to the top but I literally have not gotten one super chat, literally just donating out of the goodness of your heart. That's amazing. Andre uh, Menezes, thank you so much um, for the $20 donation to St. Jude's. That's amazing. How do you manage so many positions? Um, you're really not supposed to, to be honest. The only reason that I have so many positions is because it's beneficial to you guys and to the Discord to see how do I trade um different things right and and like i i have to send out trade alerts um and so i can't really send out trade alerts if i don't have 
you know, positions to, to talk about. And, and look, there will always be more positions available than, than you can trade or than you can manage. It does not mean you should get into so many positions in my personal life. Right. I actually would not do so many, so many positions. And I always say this on the, on the discord, you cannot possibly take every single trade, right? You, you cannot possibly take every single trade. So, you know, pick the ones that again are according to your risk tolerance, your budget, your understanding, um, your conviction on the company, your conviction on the chart. You simply cannot take every trade and you should, you shouldn't try, try to learn from the alerts, try to learn from the management of, of options when they're down, because not every play that we get into is a winning play, obviously. Right. So try to learn from that. Um, that's where the, the, the real value is gunmetal. How do you fly a plane? Of course you would ask that dude. Of course you would ask that. Andre says, dude, thanks for making this. Love the cause. Yeah, man. Every, every single live chat or live, uh, what do you call it? Live stream going forward. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing this, right? So it's like whatever money that I make from it is going to go to, to this cause. So that's, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, you deserve all the love Stephen King, dude, are you the real Stephen King or is your real name Stephen King? That's one of my favorite authors. Um, you deserve all the love. There are some more on YouTuber, YouTuber, Makers who have no idea what they are talking about except generating revenue by making crappy clickbait titles. Yeah, I mean, it, it sucks that clickbait is part of the game, I guess. Um, you know, there's a couple of YouTubers that that are really good at the clickbait title and thumbnail game. But if you dig into their content, they're, they're actually decent. Um, a lot of them aren't. <laughs> but it sucks that it is part of, like, I, I struggle with this too. Like, a lot of times, you know, I'm like, hey, do I need to catch your thumbnail? Like, I don't. I don't look as shocked in this one, right? Or I don't look as uh, as horrified in this thumbnail. I obviously those questions run through my mind too. Or is this title too tame? Is nobody going to click on this? Should I make it more out outrageous? Um, there's a reason that headline writing is an art form, right? It's just one that I have not mastered yet. Um, but yeah, uh, Rama Krish Krishnan says, "Why aren't you verified on Instagram?" Um, you know what? I've actually I was talking to someone about this yesterday. Um, I actually did not do a good job of promoting my Twitter and my Instagram in the same way that I did my YouTube. So I have hundreds of thousands of subs on YouTube, not active on Twitter, not active on IG. Um, but I should have probably, I should have probably, uh, you know, worked on all platforms at once. And that way I can get verified on, on every platform, not just on YouTube, but I ignored the other platforms and really focused on YouTube. So now I'm struggling with getting verified on, on Twitter and on, on Instagram, because I don't have as many followers as I do on, on YouTube. With that said, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. You'll see the links in the descriptions. Um, I promise, I promise to do a better job at providing you guys with, with more content. What super chats aren't on uh are you sure did i fuck that up i don't know maybe i did all right i'll check that out for the next live stream but thank you for telling me gunmetal always always gunmetal always makes a habit of embarrassing me good guy he's actually i think he's one of the first five members ever on the discord like been around since 2018 that's insane uh dylan scott thank you so much for your donation amazing all right. Uh, can you manage my portfolio? I'll give you $5. No, <laughs> definitely not. Um, Jibba Jabba says, what's under the hat? What's under the hat? My hair, dude. What do you mean? What's under the hat? Like people think I wear hats because you know, I'm, I'm losing, no, I'm not losing any hair. This, that's what's under the hat. It's just, I wear it because sometimes I look super tired in the morning and I don't feel like doing my hair, but yeah. Uh, anonymous, another $20 donation. Amazing. Can't find the super chat button. Oh, maybe it is disabled. Damn it. All right. Uh, I will turn that on for next time. My fault. Um, I could have sworn it was on. I'll check that out. I promise. Alejandro, no super chats. Regine. Yes. Regine. Yes. What were you responding to? <laughs> All right, yo Z, remind people people to hit that like button. All right, people hit that like button. There you go. 
Um, come on, Z. That's synthetic hair. I wish I even knew how to acquire synthetic hair. I, I wouldn't even know how. Why your barber do you like that, Levi? Uh, my barber is actually dope as fuck. Anonymous twenty dollars. Anonymous fifty dollars. Amazing. You guys are amazing, man. You guys are amazing. And the fact that you're remaining anonymous. I mean, obviously you don't have to, but that's, that's crazy. Gunmetal. I need the hat link, please. Didn't I send you one? I could have sworn I sent you a hat, man. All right. I'll send you another one. Hit me up. Oh, we have those. Uh, uh it's up there now. I'm not going to get it, but it's the one that I was wearing yesterday. It's the, the white Nike hat. So we did create those, uh, those samples that, that I'm, I'm looking to create a Shopify store based off of that. Um, you messed up with the super chat. <laughs> I did, but people are donating, dude. This is this is crazy. Uh, dude, great hair products out there. Yeah, dude. It's not like I wear a hat every time. Look, Unless this is the first time you're watching, you have no excuse for that dumbass comment. Like, I do have my fucking hair out a lot of times. Um, but yeah, do you have merchandise page? Seriously, I will buy your cap. Yes, I... I well, I don't. Well, besides what's at the bottom of the YouTube videos, if it's still there, if not, um, yes, we are working on a Shopify store for that stuff. Annabelle to four donated five dollars to St. Jude's. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. That's amazing. Ivan says, what's up, guys? Yash NYC meetup uh, next time I'm in NYC. Yeah. MJ Ditto. So what do you recommend for a newbie to the group? What does that mean? Um, and what in what in what sense? Um, uh, not sure I know what you mean. TSM, too late to buy. Yes, too late. You're doomed forever. Don't ever buy it again. Guys, what do you mean too late to buy? Too late for what? Like, you think this is the last price it's ever going to go to? If so, then yeah, it's too late to buy. But, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, the, the, these questions are sort of like uh, myopic and, and sort of, I don't know, they, they don't reflect reality. What do you mean too late to buy? Right. Too late to buy means that that it will never see that price again. It's 118. It was at 142 just a couple months ago. So if you think that TSM is a strong conviction stock for you and most of the large semiconductors are for me, um, then no, it's not too late to buy. It is at the top of this channel, though. You do want to see it break out, in my view, um, or see if it gets rejected and, you know, comes back down to, to that to the bottom of that channel, but too late to buy. I mean, come on guys, unless you're FOMOing into something that, you know, just rocketed, you know, it, uh, yeah. Yo Z, I need to know what you use to grow hair. Nothing, man. That's, uh, you know, that's, uh, it's all due to nature. Uh, my uncles have really thick hair. Uh, my uncles on my mom's side, right? They say that that's where you get your hair from. Your uncle's on your mom's side. That's it. So look at your uncles on your mom's side. And if your uncles are bald and your hair is thinning, then you can blame them, right? You can uh, you can make them feel bad for that. But no, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to grow hair. Heather Pratt's donated $20. Thank you so much, Heather. You're amazing. You're amazing. Uh, anonymous, another, tw oh, this is 20 pounds. The pound is actually worth more than the dollar. So thank you so much for that that donation. Uh, TSM was sitting at, yes, Jolene, tell him, girl, tell him. TSM was sitting at 108 to 110 for the longest time, right? I always make that analogy that it's like the, the lonely girl sitting at, at the at the club, like sitting in the corner or at the party, at the house party, right? It's, it's like, you know, nobody's talking to her and nobody knows why. So, um, yes, exactly, with TSM. All right. I can only see a few rooms in Discord. Do we need to? Uh, yeah. Check the link in the description. Um, if you signed up and, and you can't see the rooms, then hit up me or one of the mods. Uh, new people to the group. Make yourself welcome. Ask the right question in the right Discord channel and enjoy the brilliant community. Thank you, Gummetto. Um, MJ Ditto, where to start? What do you mean? I feel like you're trolling me with this question. This is the second time. You should paper super chat for... <laughs> <laughs> Juan Pablo Rodriguez Argente. He says you should paper trade. You should paper super chat for us. 
because I always say you should paper trade first if you're not uh, if you're not accustomed to trading options. Yes, touche. I will take that. I like being clowns. You know my motto. You could be mean if you're funny. Um, are you a believer in UFOs? What? Oh, because of my shirt? Yes, I'm wearing a Roswell, New Mexico shirt. Am I a believer in UFOs? Yes. I mean, I think everyone should be at this point. Now, whether I believe that there are, are little aliens inside those UFOs, I don't know. They could be... They could be, you know, supersonic aircraft that don't have propul propulsion systems that are developed by, you know, superpower countries as a military weapon. I don't know. They are unidentified objects, right? So technically, yes, I believe in UFOs. I don't know if I believe in that there are, you know, the traditional view of aliens in those UFOs, um, but I do think it is kind of crazy for people to think that we are the only life forms around, right? So if you think about it, there are more stars in the galaxy than there are grains of sand on Earth. That is wild, right? And each one of those stars has at least, we're talking about hundreds of billions of stars, okay? The sun being one of them. Each one of those stars has at least one planet, right? And most astrophysicists think that there are multiple planets per stars. But even if you just take the premise that each one of those stars has at least one planet, right? As opposed to eight or nine, like our solar system does. You are talking about hundreds of billions of planets, okay? To think that mathematically, we're the only ones, that this planet is the only one that has the ripest conditions enough to create life forms, and that's that would be actually a mathematical improbability, right? So it is more probable that there are other that the conditions exist on other planets to support life forms. Now, how those life forms look, I have no idea. So yes, if you call those life forms on other planets that we may never see in our lifetime, if you call those aliens, yeah, I believe in them. Um, but as far as as on Earth, the aircraft that we see, yes, they, they're technically UFOs. I don't know what it, you know who's driving them, but sure. I believe in UFOs. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Era says, what's your ethnicity? You can pronounce Spanish words with swagger. Dude, I grew up in L.A. All right. If you live in, if you live in L.A. and you can't pronounce Spanish words, then you're probably not from the same neighborhoods that I grew up in. <laughs> <laughs> or you don't like tacos enough you know what i mean it's like yeah z-rated area 51 no dude you've seen aliens no i have not seen aliens that's not what i said um do you have a full-time job outside of youtube no i don't uh curious to learn what's needed to live the life um honestly a lot of it sounds cliche right a lot of hard work a lot of failure, a lot of learning, like willingness to learn, okay? You're not going to be able to live off of trading by just copying someone or copying uh, what you see on CNBC or what you see on YouTube or whatever. You're not going to be able to live off of trading. You, you have to put in the work to educate yourself, right? Learn about... Um, how options move, even if you're not an options trader. Let's say, look, okay, I will say this. I've actually never met, and this is a fun fact, and I may shock some of you. I've actually never met a full-time day trader that just trades stocks. I've met a full-time Forex trader. I know many full-time options traders. Um, and I know people that have invested, like people my age and older, who have invested for so long in the market that they have two, three, four million dollar portfolios and they live off of the dividends as well as the gains in, in those portfolios, right? But I've never met someone who day trades just stocks. Um, either way, regardless, put that aside. That's just a fun fact. It is, it, it, it's not like one of these things where you're going to pick up in a month and then all of a sudden be like, yep, I'm ready to retire from, from my job. No. You don't go out, play pickup basketball for a week and say you're going to join the NBA. That just does not happen, right? 
like you you will be in the workforce for 15 20 years while trading on the side and educating yourself before possibly being able to live off of your trading now i will tell you that a very long time ago even while i was working i was able to achieve a nice side income or side hustle by trading options mostly trading spreads and selling cash secure puts on a weekly basis that that is most of my strategy right not from buying calls um but you do have to go through losses to, to learn what strategy works works for you um but yeah i mean you know it, it just like anything being a professional anything is going to take a lot of work and a lot of reading and a lot of studying and a lot of failing and a lot of successes um you know, getting mentored by, by, by others who, who have done it. Like there was a job that I had back in 2011, I was working a contract job. I was in the software industry and we actually had an options trading group at work. Like we used to get together and exchange ideas. And I paper traded for months, uh, with this group before I ever, uh, you know, put in a, a dollar in, in options. Um, even though I had been trading stocks before that. So it's not as <laughs> it's, it's obviously not as easy as, as anybody would, would make it out to, to seem right. It's yeah, man, it's, uh, it's, it's a struggle, but you know, aliens don't have your hair though. <laughs> there are aliens in our sand. Yes. That's exactly what I said. Grandpa Goku come in here and post that off topic. <laughs> what did he say? Mike, tell me what Goku said. Stop with the numbers. I'm a conehead. Okay. Are you investing in merging markets? Oh, you mean emerging markets? Yes. I talked about this yesterday. Um, I do have, I, I, I would, I'm not, I would not put more than 5% of my portfolio in emerging markets, but I do have a mixed basket of emerging as well as the, the Chinese, especially now that the, the Chinese, uh, tech, tech industry, now that it's beaten down to hell, right? It's like at all almost at 2015 lows. So, um, all right. Uh, da, da, da. I'm missing a lot. I'm missing a lot. I'm missing a lot. What did you do before you used before trading full time? Um, I used to work in, in software. So I actually went to school for finance. That's what I got my degree in worked in the finance industry for a bit. Absolutely hated it. Taught myself how to code, went into software development, then went into management. Um, yeah. How do you keep your Wi-Fi connection safe when traveling? I have uh, a VPN. Z's options training is really, really good. Thank you, uh, Christian. I, I believe that's how you pronounce uh, the spelling of your name. Apologies if I if I butchered it. Um, five six two for life. <laughs> yeah, you know what's up. Um, Z, do you think the life forms on other planets are subbed and trade options interplanetarily? Uh, maybe. Maybe they, maybe, I don't know. Um, Mike says you can copy Nancy Pelosi. Oh, is that what Goku said? Yeah. We were making a joke about Pelosi that all of her trades are, are lit. Um, all right. I don't understand how you can go talking for an entire hour without a sip of water. You know what? I, you're so right. I was thinking that and I was like, freak, I need to get more water. There. Also, I do have sparkling water here that looks insanely cool because of the green screen behind me. The can is green. So it appears like transparent because the can is green. Um, I might open this in a second, but I might also ditch for a second and go back to the, uh, the discord group. Uh, what was your job before? I already talked about it. Um, how do you pay yourself as a trader only through options? Uh, again, my long-term positions, I don't cash out because I don't want to get tax burdened with that. Um, but yeah, weekly spreads, weekly cash secure puts. Do you agree that most people should invest in a few index or ETFs and not try to beat the market? I mean, you're not trying to beat the market. No, I don't agree with that. Um, of course I don't agree with that. Um, well, I take that back. Most people, yes. But people that are learning how to read charts, people that are learning how to trade, no. Um, I know somebody that made $2 million trading Tesla options, right? Uh, they obviously picked Tesla as, as their go-to play, and they didn't just trade index funds. 
And they started off with 50K, by the way. They bought $50,000 worth of Tesla call options. Obviously, it was right at the right time. I think it was April 2020. And they made $2 million off of it. So, no, if, if, you know, if you are learning how to trade and learning how to chart, of course, what are you doing that for if you're, if you're only going to pick index funds? But I do believe that in your retirement portfolio that you are better served and you can go to bed at night knowing that most of your money is invested in the American stock market for the long term. That's what I believe to what you do. Um, yeah, this is Vishal says, this is exactly what I did. Worked 25 years, quit my job this year at 45 and now full time training. Exactly. It's not an overnight thing. Uh, you sound very educated. Which college did you go to? Um, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> All right. Uh, are you an undercover hedgy? No, definitely not. Definitely not. Um, I did work at a stock brokerage firm, but it was not a hedge fund. No. Um, I'm going to need you to keep up with the chat. Dude, there's too much going on in the chat. Charge point. Talked about it already. Uh, love from the Bay Area. What's going on um, from SoCal? <laughs> All right. Uh, please take a look at Tesla. Regine says, reminder to hit the like button, everyone. Yes. Thank you, Regine. Thank you. Egyptian King says, thank you, man. Thanks. Um, all right. Da, 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 da. Favorite pasta sandwich man says, I'll take a look at Tesla and NVIDIA. Um, Sesson, no, I don't have a position in, in Sesson. What is your star sign? Is that like horoscope? I'm a Virgo. But I actually like the Chinese horoscopes better because um, I'm a monkey and I really like apes. So I tend to say that. Um, Pelosi is the best trader. Yes. Get hydrated or get out. Easy choice. Mm. Have you jumped in on AMC GME train? Yeah. I mean, I, I sell puts on AMC quite a bit. Um, all right. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, favorite pasta. Okay, let's see. Uh, favorite pasta would have to be. I don't know. I'm I'm boring when it comes to that. I really like penne. Penne pasta is really good. So I'd say penne pasta. There you go. Uh, what sort of development did you do? Uh, I I first started with. <laughs> I'm old, dude. So I first started with .dot net. Right. If anyone is old enough to remember what ASP and ASP.net were. That's what I started uh, developing with. Uh, let's take a look at Tesla. And guys, apologies if this, if I messed up the super chat. I will look at the settings after this um, because I could have sworn I turned it on because they said that if you do have a, a video where you do have a fundraiser, then all super chats go to the fundraiser. Maybe I didn't tick it on. Maybe it's a bug. I don't know. I will definitely check it. Um, I think Tesla is within range, man. You could see from the volume profile most of Tesla's trading happens between $600 and $700. So it's unremarkable at the moment is what I will say. However, I do like selling cash secure puts on Tesla when Tesla's price does drop. But there's nothing in the chart right now from the technical perspective that says Tesla has any reason to significantly go up from here. So this is what you call trading within range. Um, and then someone else asked me about, oh, NVIDIA. Yeah. NVIDIA was like the easiest buy in my view at the 50 day moving average. It hit that almost twice, uh, once before the split and once after the split, like, I mean, no brainer here. Um, but should you buy it now? No, this is what you call FOMO, right? You want to wait to see a, a drawdown of sorts, or you want a dollar cost average, if you really want to hold the stock. But the, the reason that people say, oh, can I buy it here is because they think that they will replicate the gains that people already made who were rewarded for jumping in earlier, right? You're not going to be rewarded like someone who bought this at a major moving average or who bought a pre-split, etc. cetera. You, the, the higher it goes, the more incremental your gains will be and the less disproportionate your gains are going to be or exponential, right? So, yeah. Uh, da, da, da. stay okay. Let's see. Take a quick intermission. Hmm. I wonder why. Like, do you need to pee? And so you're telling me <laughs> to take an intermission so that you can go pee. <laughs> Beto, what's going on, bro? When is the Mexico meetup? All right, Beto, I need you to tell me in what city are we going to do this? Right? Are we gonna do this in Mexico City? Are we gonna do it in Guadalajara? 
where are we going to do the Mexico meetup? I'm really curious. Beto is a good brother that lives in, in Mexico. Also one of the OG uh, Discord members. Um, I'm not going to tell them where you live, though. I know where you live. I'm not going to tell them where you live. Th that's personal information. But tell me where in Mexico you think we should do the meetup. All right? Yes, I would love to do a Mexico meetup. Are you kidding? Uh, can you block this? What? I have no idea. All right, Angie, thank you so much for your donation to St. Jude Children's Hospital. Oh, block this person? Uh, how do you block? Hide user on this channel. Let's see if that works. Remove. Remove. All right. What is this program that you use? For what? Noah Wilcox is that. Are you talking about the charting program? It's TradingView, and you can get a free account. Um, Omar Z. Hey, I signed up for the options course, by the way. Amazing content. Are you going to add more? You know what? Yeah, I have no problem adding more uh, based on based on feedback, right? Like if there's something in there, like an advanced strategy that you guys see me use that, that is not in there, let me know. Um, let me know. And, and I will do that. Um, <laughs> Op Caesar says he's either 41 or 29. <laughs> I'm neither of those, but thank you. Um, based pan and pasta. Yeah. Stock Nostradamus. Any books you would suggest for investing? <sighs> no. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's, if you, if you, if you get help from mindset books, yes. Uh, because most of, uh, at least when it comes to trading, right? Most of trading is, is psychological, right? Knowing that, Hey, if, if you buy and your position is down, but it's still a support, what is that impulse that, that monkey part of your brain that makes you want to sell? Well, it's, it's just, it's just based in nature, man. Like, we're, at the end of the day, we're all apes, okay? And if you see something declining in value right in front of you, then you are you are going to panic, right? There, there's no way based on, on our survival uh, mechanisms, right? When something is declining in value, your nature is telling you, hey, get out. This is not good for you. And then when you see other apes who have, say, you know, they, they went hunting and, and they caught a... A, a huge, they made a huge catch, then you're like, hey, I want a piece of that too, right? That impulse is called FOMO. These are all built into us based on nature. And you really have to reverse that when you are trading or, or investing, right? Like when something is declining in value, you want to look at that as an opportunity if it's a high conviction company, right? Like I still, it still boggles my mind how, you know, Apple can be at a 20% discount or Amazon can be at a 20% discount and someone look at that and be like, ah, no, I'm good. Right? Like if you're investing, what are you doing? Like that, unless you think those companies are done, like what are you doing? Right? Like you have to give yourself the best chance to win. But yet if Apple then, you know, is past all time highs and they announced the iPhone 13 and the Apple car and all that stuff, then they buy at the all time high. Like it just, you really have to break out of that mindset. Um, so any mindset books that help you in that regard, sure. I believe that in terms of trading and investing, you're much better off with practical experience, charting, uh, paper trading. These are all free, right? This is stuff that didn't exist when I was learning uh, back in the day. We didn't have, like I didn't, I couldn't just pull up trading view on my phone. It's amazing that in my pocket, I have the most advanced charting platform and I could sit there at the DMV and, <laughs> and chart something, you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. Um, all right. All right da, 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 da. Do the meetup, do the meetup in TJ at Hong Kong in Tijuana. <laughs> no, man, I'm not doing it. Quintana Roo. Uh, yes. I like Quintana Roo. That's on the, um, that's in the Yucatan, right? That's, that's there in the, in the Caribbean. It's beautiful. Um, meet up in Vegas. We were talking about this, uh, but the, the dates that we were looking at, I don't know if there's some kind of convention or something going on, but the prices are just insane. And I cannot within good conscience, you know, tell you guys, uh, 
hey, there's a meetup in Vegas and the rooms are starting at 1200 a night. Like, mm. so we'll see. All right. Uh, anything about rolling options? Okay. You want to talk about rolling options? I can add that to the course for sure. Cancun or Mexico City would work. Beto, brother. <laughs> As a Mexican citizen, I'm kind of disappointed that you mentioned Cancun. Um, Mexico City, I love. I love Mexico City for sure. Uh, but yeah, all right. We can. We might. We might. We might do Mexico City then. Uh, da, 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 da. For someone just starting, what is the most profitable and easiest strategy to trade? There is no easy strategy. Okay, take that out of your mind. Take that out of your mind. There is no easy strategy because it all takes work to execute. It all takes work to learn. Um, there is no easy strategy. Now, for investing, if you have money, at like a, if you inherited a bunch of money or you got a bonus at work or something, um, then yeah, you could put it in an index fund. A another easy passive strategy is dollar cost averaging, meaning say that you make, I don't know, 5000 a month from your job. Um, or 2,500 every two weeks, right? You would take a portion of that, whatever, you know, obviously you take the money that, that you need to live and then whatever is left, you put that in, in the market. So say your goal is to invest $500 every two weeks in the market. That's called dollar cost averaging. That is easy. That is passive. That's not trading. That's passive investing. Um, I would say that that is easy if you're looking for building a long-term uh, portfolio. But in terms of trading, there are no easy strategies. Every strategy requires a lot of work and back testing and studying and looking over what you did wrong and being honest with yourself, right? Um, this whole, oh yeah, I, I bought, um, you know, bingo, it's down 80%, but I know that if I hold, I'm going to be rich. No, you might not. Um, be realistic with yourself. If you have a 10, if you have $10,000 and you need to invest them today, in one stock and forget about it for the next 20 years. Wow. What a scenario, dude. Like who's holding a gun to your head? <laughs> I mean, that's just nuts. Um, if you had to invest in one stock, I don't know, something I'd invest in the Q's, right? QQQ. There you go. That's what I would do. Um, All right, let's see. What stock should we sell? God, I mean, you guys are taking these questions next level, dude. That's like an inception. I don't know what stock you should sell. Sell whatever stock you're not happy with. Um, there is a spread section to the course. What are you talking about? There's like, and there's more than an hour dedicated to, to spreads on, in the course. Um, not sure what, what course you're talking about. Bree Bree, what's going on? She says, what about AMD? Um, AMD, I think right now, like I mentioned this in Sunday's video, I believe. Yeah. I said that AMD was a buy at the 21 EMA. Um, you know, that that is a nice support level. Now, you're still buying it kind of high, especially considering the fact that just last month, AMD was below $90. Um, this run up here not only is due to the fact that, that the major chip companies are recording record profits because of the chip shortage, but they're also American chip companies like AMD and Intel are likely to be big parts of the, the infrastructure uh, bill. And then also AMD has a purported merger or acquisition of Xilinx, which China right now is putting on hold, but the market is expecting that to go through. So some of that is priced in, you know, Again, you're not going to buy AMD at 108 and expect to make the same gains as somebody who bought AMD at 80. It's just not going to happen. So remember, the higher you go, the more incremental your gains become, the less exponential they become. Um, but it's a great company to hold for the long term. I'm bullish on the semiconductor industry in general. As I said in my last video, the semiconductor industry is looking to double its revenues in less than 10 years. Like the whole industry is gonna grow by 2X, right? So pick the best conviction stocks that you have in that industry, or you can invest in something like SOXX, which is a semiconductor ETF, or SOXL, which is the cheaper leverage semiconductor cousin of SOXX, and you don't have to pick uh, stock. AMD is in both of these, by the way. 
and you don't have to pick individual stocks, but you know, up to you. Hopefully that answered your question. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Steven Jai donated $5. Thank you so much, Steven. I will definitely look to turn on the super chats next time. My bad. Um, gun metal. Anyone wants to, any DCA tips can always ask me. Can also do weighted DCA into big tech. Future portfolio wins. Z taught me. Yes. Weighted DCA is, uh, you know, you have dollar cost averaging where you're just buying, um, you know, the same amount every on a schedule basis, every two weeks or every month. Or you can have a weighted dollar cost averaging strategy, which requires you to know how to read a chart on a basic level. Where if you see the S&P, right, like look how many times it hit the 50 day moving average going all the way back to February. When it when these indexes or these uh, blue chip stocks hit these major moving averages, then you would go in heavier. Right. So say that you're investing 500 every two weeks in the S&P 500 every two weeks and then, whoa, all of a sudden correction or pullback. Right. S&P is at the 50 day moving average. Then now you put in a thousand dollars. Right. That's how weighted DCA works. Um, Obviously, it requires you to know what is a major drop and what is a support level, et cetera. But you don't have to be a master chartist. You can really learn that in a day, uh, you know. So, yes, gunmetal, correct. Thank you for that. Um, all right. Da, 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 da. Thoughts on the trade desk on long hold now after split? We've been holding the trade desk for a very long time. Yes. I mean, why? why would you sell it? Un unless you need the money, but yeah. Um, why are you ignoring my Neo question on the HK IPO? Dog, I'm not ignoring anything. Like, look how many questions are here. Chill, all right? Um, I don't know. You could have easily posted your question there, and I would, I would know what the hell you're talking about, but all your question said is, why are you ignoring my question? And now I don't know what the hell your question is. Good job. Um, can you please... Can you explain, please, the EMAs that you use? I use the 21 EMA, the 50, 100, 200 MA. Um, all right. Intel, any thoughts, any negative catalysts? Yeah, I mean, every company has a potential negative catalyst. Of course, there's any negative catalyst, right? Um, but I, I like it for the long term. I think there's more value there than, than there are in some of these other chips that are trading at, at uh, more expensive multiples. Um, go easy on him. You were doing great. Yeah, man. I'm just pulling his leg. Um, God damn. We are getting a lot of spam here. Hide user. See the hide user thing is not working at the moment. Can we ban this spam, Dude, I tried. It's not doing anything. Um, all right. Last question. And then I'm going to bounce and I'm going to see you guys on the discord. And I do definitely want to get into that VIX. I'm going to sell a cash secure put on the VIX for sure. I want to get in on that before the Fed symposium tomorrow. If you guys are in uh, the Discord group, you will get that, that alert. I will tell you what strikes I'm going to be picking, but it's likely going to be the 16 or 15 strike. Um, Z, tequila, vodka, wine, or cerveza? It depends on what I'm doing. Definitely not vodka. It definitely would be either tequila, mezcal, cerveza, or wine, right? Depending on what I'm I'm eating, really. Um, yeah, but I'm not a heavy drinker. Like, I'm a social drinker. I'll have one or two drinks if I'm out with somebody. Um, but yeah, like, I definitely don't don't drink at home. But it's going to be it's definitely not going to be vodka. All right. Let's 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 say that VIX put premiums are so low. Uh, then yeah, you could buy calls then. Um, can you buy VIX options on RH or Fidelity? Definitely not RH. Uh, maybe Fidelity. Dog, is you Mexican? No, I'm not Mexican, dude. I live in LA. Like, <laughs> these are the neighborhoods that I grew up in. Um, I speak LA Mexican Spanish. All right. The question was, if you think Neo is a buy before the HK IPO. Look, Cesar or Cesar. I don't know how you pronounce your name. I'm going to tell you something. If you know about it, right, and I know about it, and your grandmother knows about it, shout out to your grandmother, no disrespect, it's priced in, right? There's no way that you know about it and the market doesn't know about it, right? Unless you're an insider and you have insider info, 
right? So that stuff is priced in like, oh, should I buy before battery day? Should I buy before AI day? Should I buy before IPO? The only, not the only, one of the only binary events that's uncertain are earnings. And why are they why are they uncertain? Because nobody knows what's going to what's going to happen on earnings, right? That's why we trade earnings, because you don't know the info, right? So you if you're expecting uh, a run up or expecting a decline, you're guessing, and that's why you're being rewarded for that guess, okay? But if you know about an event, everyone knows about that event, right? Like, don't fool yourself. You you don't have insider info. Now, would I buy before the HK IPO? I don't know. I don't make one. I don't. I don't trade IPOs in general, even though Neo is on the American market, um, and it is now going to be dual listed. But I would trade Neo based on the fundamentals of Neo, regardless of HK IPO or not. And as I said, I did a whole Neo video last week. I talked about Neo, and as I said there, I think Neo does have a uh, a price rally due in the mid to long term based on some of the factors that I talked about in the video, the price upgrades that it got, et cetera. Uh, some of the plans that it has for Europe is, you know, just go back and watch that video. It's it's titled, there's Neo in the, it's the last Neo video I did. Um, so no, I wouldn't buy it just based on the HK IPO, but I also like selling puts on Neo. So Neo's chilling here, you know, at the 300 MA, I like selling the $30 put on Neo. It's a very easy decision for me because Worst comes to worst, I get to own 100 shares of NEO at $30. If NEO dropped to $30 organically, I would buy it anyway. Um, so that's why I'm comfortable setting that, that $30 put. So hopefully that answers your question, all right? Anonymous donated 20 bucks. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, that's amazing. Whoever did that, thank you so much. Um, all right, all right, all right, all right. Member. Oh, Lynette. Thank you so much and welcome to... Uh, to the trading fam. All right, guys. Uh, Sox L has a warning not to buy for long term. Yeah, it's a leveraged ETF. Um, so look up leveraged ETFs and uh, you know Google um, why you should not buy leveraged ETFs for the long term and make a decision based on that. Brent. Elias says, your live streams are wonderful and informative. God bless. Thank you so much. I love that you guys joined this. Man, this was amazing. We raised, I didn't even expect this, dude. And, it, you know, my dumbass didn't turn on Super Chats, but yet you still donated almost 900 bucks going to the children's hospital. Amazing, guys. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much to each and every one of you. Um, I will be, every single live stream from here on out will be a fundraiser. So whether you donate or not. I still want you guys as part of the live stream, whether you do the super chats or not. I still want you guys as part of the live stream. Um, and anything I make will be donated to, to the Children's Hospital. Um, all right, guys. Uh, this was fun. As always, look out for the next one. Likely, I'll the next one will be on Friday. Um, but yeah, hit that like button. Leave a comment. Do whatever. Um, and I'll see you guys soon. All right. Peace.